everyone has been uh, been dying for, I think. But uh, we're nowhere if we are don't know for sure that they will work in the next release. So. Um, next up, we have Sasha Hetzinger. Um, Sasha is from the University of Luxembourg, um, and specifically from the Luxembourg Center for Systems Biomedicine. Is that correct? Uh, what? Systems, systems Biomedicine. Yeah, yeah I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Agrees. And uh, they're doing this work uh, with an Etrix. So uh, it's always good to mention uh, those projects which finances. Um, I think Sasha already mentioned that uh, one in three people uh, at this conference asked him about smart R. So probably all know already uh, what smart R is, but uh, I'll give the full details uh, now. Thank you. So, hi everyone. Thank you for that introduction. Um, so, um, I was having a very hard time to decide what I'm going to talk about because on the one side you have the people here who probably just want to see the visual analytics. On the other side you have the developers here who are more interested in the technical details and um, I'm probably going to mess it up anyway but I'm trying to uh, talk about the technical detail in one half and show the demos in the end. So I will start with a small introduction. What is it about? Goes through the frameworks of performance and uh, the session management, and in the end, there will be some demos. So, Smarter, it's simply a plugin for Transmart. Um, there is very few connections to the actual Transmart code. Two lines, as it is for now, and uh, uh, it contains several highly interactive visual analytics. It allows you to explore your data, which, uh, well, was possible already, but not to this extent. And it allows you to implement your own visualizations if you know a little bit of R and if you can adapt to some web techniques such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's really, really simple. Um, so why do we need it? Um, I, I mentioned it already. Uh, there is, uh, for now, no post-processing possible. So on-the-fly computations of statistical values such as, for example, the correlation of something uh, does not work. You have to relaunch the whole workflow again. So there is no exploration possible, so you can't, for example, apply different clustering algorithms to a heat map. Um, you will have to launch this whole workflow again and again if you want a different clustering. And there is no cohort selection or patient selection possible. So let's say you have, um, you have, let's say, a scatter plot, and you see some really interesting data points. Um, well, you are it's not in an easy way possible to actually select this cohort for further analysis. And that's uh, issues which Smarter is trying to solve. So this is Smarter. Um, or at least, uh, well, um, what I'm often saying is that Smarter is not only the visualization. The visualization is the upper right part, but people mostly forget about all the rest which is happening in the background. Um, uh, I was mentioning that it's really easily possible to actually deploy visualizations for Smarter. And we are currently in a hackathon, and I really hope that, uh, that uh, on Wednesday we will have some new visual or proof of concept analytics uh, which actually uh, which actually prove what I'm saying right now. So um, what Smarter is actually doing is, uh, first of all, you need your parameters. So that's your concept boxes, that's uh, certain parameters, like uh, which correlation statistics you want to apply, like, like Pearson or Spearman or something like that, some check boxes. That's all happening here. After that, um, well, a lot of magic happens, but um, um, so um, at this point, I will get this parameter you were inputting here. I will take the data from the database, prepare them in a certain format, and then I will uh, send them through other to this part, to the R script. And what's really interesting here, it's happening without file system access. For now, it uh, was. Um, in, in the old R modules, RDC modules, it was always like that, that it was written to the file system, read again by R, processed, written again to the file system, read again until it was visualized, uh, before it was visualized. And what's happening now is 
it get piped through TCP, TC, right, through other, into R. It will be processed, filtered, statistics will be computed, and then again, without file system access, it gets piped back into crates. And this part is actually something that a developer or some, someone who wants to deploy visualizations doesn't have to care about. Um, what is new is that R is absolutely uh, not taking care of the visualizations. I use it merely for computing st uh, the statistics which support my visualizations. So once it is in crates, it, it gets sent to the browser, which is the upper right part. Uh, you see here the symbol, uh, symbol of D3. You often hear together with Smarter the name D3. That's basically uh, a JavaScript framework which is very, very powerful and allow you to, uh, to make basically any visualization you want. But I really want to s say clearly that um, there is no hard dependency to D3. You can use Google Viz, BioSci, any JavaScript framework that you are familiar with. Um, and make really amazing visualizations like that. So to summarize this, in order to deploy a visualization for R, for Smart R, and in the hackathon I'm going to prove that, or people will prove me, maybe, you just need one file for the input, one file to compute the statistics, and one file to visualize things. You place them in the right folders, and you have a new visual analytics. It's really simple as that. So uh, I checked a little bit the performance uh, and tried to compare it with old arm, arm modules. As I was saying already, I'm not writing to the file system anymore. So this give me, uh, give me, uh, gives me a little advantage um, because it's all this reading, uh, reading and passing and writing, uh, well, falls away. So I was trying this with uh, a marker selection, 167 patients. I was computing the setter score on the fly, and I wanted to display 100 features. As you can see here, Smarter was needing less than half of the time of the R modules. And here, as you see again, uh, what I was mentioning already, uh, with the R modules, we have this workflow. We have crates. Crates write it to the file system. It's read and passed by R. It's writing to the file system again, and then you have the picture. What's happening in SmartR is what you see here. The file system access is completely falling away. And um, this is actually really interesting because it's a circle. It's a circle because from your visualization, you can launch that whole thing again without losing um, the data you were accessing from the database. Um, so um, you don't, assuming you just want to update some little statistics in your heat map, you don't have to get them again out of the database. They're still here. Which brings me to the session management, because that's essentially what it is. Um, you have a user A which wants to launch a heat map analysis. So there is no session available. What will happen is the same than before. It will, uh, it will send a request to, uh, to Crails. Crails will access the database. Uh, the R script will compute everything, but what happens now, Smarter creates a session, so it will remember these steps actually. So some moments later, the user wants to, let's say, use another ranking criteria. So for example, log fall change instead of p-value. Yeah, want to get some updated statistics. Now Smarter is reusing this session. And it's really up to the user to which extent it reuses the session. If you, if you modify your output a little bit, you can skip most computation parts. And this results in a massive performance gain because um, you don't have to access the database. You don't have to uh, pass the data in the R script again. It's still all available. So in the end, if you are, are clever enough and, and uh, encapsule just the part which needs to be recomputed, you have updated statistics in a blink of an eye. And in the correlation analysis, for example, I, uh, I use this to update my statistics within, I would say, less than ten, uh, like a quarter of a second, maybe, probably even less. So um, another possible uh, way to uh, use this, user A and B. Um, a was doing some really nice heat map and want to share this to user B. 
So there is a session ID, uh, which identifies the session, and user A shares it to user B, and user B will be able to actually see what user A has done. So this is not implemented, but um, because I still have need to have a look at uh, like things like security concerns, obviously. Um, but um, this uh, session management makes it definitively possible to do that, and actually heard already from some people that there was an interest in that. So the result of what you have seen is one times the timeline analysis. What you see here is um, three concepts in this case um, that can be, for example, plot pressure, uh, pulse, and some some plot value, some biomarker. Uh, with its respective values on uh, the y-axis and the time points on the x-axis. Each of that lines represents one patient. Um, and of course I will show uh, in a moment a video to it, so it will not stay uh, just a boring static image like this. I have the correlation analysis, which is a scatter plot. So I have two numerical variables which I would like to compare to each other, like age and survival time. Uh, on the y-axis you have a histogram, on the x-axis you have a histogram, you have some statistics. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to give you now a little overview before I launch all the videos because it can be a bit overwhelming because I made the videos really fast um, because I have only half an hour and uh, I would probably need one hour to explain everything up into every detail. I have the cross study box plots which uh, what you see here essentially is you have uh, from one study on the left side, the age categorized into a life dead and not available, and from another study, you have again the age categorized in a life dead and not available. So you you can take a numerical variable and you can subset it with categorical variables from your I2B2 tree. And you have uh, the thing which people ask me the most: the heat map. Um, I don't think I have to say that much about it. Uh, and you will probably see in the video every detail of it. It's actually the longest video, so it should not be a problem. So, um, I still have enough time, great. So, what do I start with? Correlation. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to update. What I have done uh, already as a little introduction, I, this is, I think, age and survival time. What I do now is I will uh, I will track a whole folder with categories, no, uh, cancer node stages in this case. You see the updated legend and the updated color of the points. I know I can stop speaking because the video does it for me. What you see here is I select a certain part and the statistics such as the regression line and the correlation coefficient in the legend and also the histograms are updating on the fly. You just choose a different uh, container amount for the histograms. That's nice, I don't have to talk anymore. Here you exclude some data points which you don't want in your data set. If you are being a bit messy, you can reset it, of course. Really simple function. You can zoom in on data points if you have a lot of data points. It can be really useful. And this is really interesting. It's the same than zoom on the first view. But if you go to the comparison tab, you see that the cohorts are updated. So that's what I was saying earlier. You go to uh, select a certain set of patients, you update your cohorts, and now you can launch, for example, a box put on it, or the other way around, or uh, yeah, things like that, because, you know, you can basically further filter your patients and get hopefully some interesting results. Um, Cross-study box plots, why not? So what I'm showing here is I take two different studies. 
I should maybe mention at this point, uh, actually all my workflows are capable of uh, all workflows which use two cohorts as the input are theoretically able to use support cross-study. But for example, with heat map, you have the problem of um, how do you normalize your data? How, how can you actually <coughs> attach the heat maps to each other? Uh, which is why that feature is not uh, advertised by me. So it's a general feature of smart R that two cohorts can be independently uh, coming from different uh, studies. So what I'm doing here is I want to compare the age of one study with the age of the other study. Now I subset them with some categorical variables. Alive dead are not available in this case. Can again remove data points if you want to. Ignore that line for the moment. That's not supposed to be in the video at this point already. I messed up a little bit in Windows Movie Maker. What's happening at this point is, by the way, uh, I'm long watching the R scripts at every point because those box plots have to be recomputed again. So this is the circle which I was mentioning earlier. You can remove outliers on the fly. Now you have this line just by the clear kernel density estimation. So if you have a lot of data points, you see where your points are actually located, which you see, and it's updating too when you remove data points. And you have some little visual effects because I like black plots. Yeah, so. Oh, I still have time. Great. The heat map comes last. So everyone will see. <laughs> um, so uh, it doesn't matter in which concept you go. <coughs> You have uh, you, you just hover a certain patient, and it will be highlighted in all other concepts. Can be really useful if you want to keep track of a single patient. If you see a cluster by by eye, then you can uh, assign it a certain color. This can be really useful if you would like to. Uh, if you see a cluster in one concept, and then you see that uh, well, something's going on with that color in another concept. So it can be really interesting too for, for filtering uh, patients with interesting features. That's a coronal prem, basically giving an idea on uh, on how random your data are. Uh, you can zoom the x-axis, so you can select which time points you actually want to see. Ah, that's a nice thing. Uh, you can sort your time points. So you just grab a point at the x-axis and you drag it around where you want it to have, have it. Of course, you have to do this with, uh, with a certain understanding of the data because otherwise, um, well, things get messy, as you can see here. And in this case, smoothing comes in handy. <coughs> Looks much better now. can get a semi or full automatic clustering. So what you see on the side now are the dendrograms. And if you hover the points, you see the respective underlying uh, patients. And if you click on them, you can cluster them or assign them a color, which serve pretty much the same uh, purpose than doing it via manually by hand. And you have again the cohort updating. So you select some patients, you update your cohort, and in your comparison tabs, the cohorts were changing. So only that three patients which you were just selecting are in your cohort now. And no magem. Just, 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 uh, just something really basic to tip going through all the features. So 
<laughs> this is actually a lot harder than it looks like because I'm not dealing with the image here. I'm dealing with, uh, I think, 30,000, no? 30,000, no. 20,000 objects in the browser, <laughs> which have to be all resized. You can uh, select, uh, you can sort <coughs> by patient or by feature. That's really interesting for colorblind people or for different data sets, different value ranges, things like that. You have integrated gene cards, so you just uh, you see some interesting uh, patient gene, you click on it, and um, you uh, a new tab opens with gene cards. Get more information about that specific feature. You have post analysis expansion. That's the one point which I know is annoying me the most. That you were basically before you were seeing the heat map, you needed to say say how much you want to see of the heat map. That's ridiculous. So. You click now the back that button and 100 rows will be appended to you, as you see here. It's a lot longer now. Here you have the dynamic clustering, which I mentioned earlier, and the respective uh, patient and feature dendrograms. You have the subset selection. I should... Mm, the visual... Uh, effect is already here, but I think it's not yet in Transmart or the Etrex branch. So, as soon as the uh, heat maps uh, subset selection is here, then it will be implemented. You have a slicing, so you s want to cut the heat map off at a certain p value and launch your clustering only on that uh, sliced heat map. What I'm doing right now is I'm expanding my heat map with low dimensional data numerical and categorical. And here we are. Now you see over the heat maps the low dimensional data I was just adding. You can sort by the significance, which is uh, the histogram on the left. And this is really useful. You can sort by so low dimensional features as well, so for example the age. That's it, and now I have one more slide. Because that's something that people frequently ask me. Where do I get it? So it will be probably most likely part of Transmart 1.3. Uh, it will be in the Etrix Labs, which will be launched on Thursday uh, in the Etrix annual meeting. It's also in Amsterdam. Uh, look at my poster, if there is a link and QR code, or you can ask me, in which case I will tell you that it's on the poster, so you look at my poster. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, does it mean that it's out of stores available now? It's available, you can find it on GitHub. Explanation was how to install it, uh, there is, there is uh, on my poster, there is a link uh, to <laughs> there is a link to a WAR file. There is a link to this uh, to a server which we host at Uni Luxembourg right now. And you can also download a fully uh, WAR file there, including Smart already. So you can just drop it in your Tomcat folder. Yeah, but they don't look at my poster then. <laughs> Great one. So questions? So who wants to start? Yeah. yeah. Was, was you adjust the parameters and uh, selected a subset of patients or expanded your list of patients? Are you able to save these parameters and share these parameters with, with the person to apply them and the cohort, for instance, in case of a multi centric study? Are you able to, uh, to share your parameters with another center and then uh, like? That's the point where I would like to mention um, one thing. Um, I'm heavily dependent on feedback. Uh, I, for the moment, I get really, really few of it. 
And if you just send me an email with exactly this feature request, then I think it's a time, like one or two days, and have simple things like that implemented. But I need to know that people want this. But I don't see why not, because in the end, it's just a simple text string which you can pass around. So it should be really simple for me to do it. Just you know, drop me an email, and uh, as soon as I have the time for it, I can do something like that. Your email is in your poster? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it is. <laughs> Yes. So I put it well on you have all the data in the error. Okay, so you have many sessions. How do you manage the network? If you have many users from many different queries, etc., how do you clean the memory? Well, uh, for the moment, um, I think. I was having a heat map with 167 patients and one or 200 features. Even that is just, I think, 100 megabyte, maybe less, of data, which is in the R section. Uh, before the RAM gets full, you have to get really a lot of heat maps and a lot of users. But if that happens, then, well, um, that's obviously a hardware limitation. I can't do much on the software side, so I just have to kick out the uh, the oldest user, the oldest session. But then, um, uh, the session, how do you test? Well, that's that's object to uh, to several effects. Like you can say, I just want to memorize, let's say, ten sessions at most. So if uh, user eleven comes, user one will be thrown out. It can be a question of RAM. So if the, the RAM gets full the user flies out. Or it can be a question of time, so uh, it gets assigned uh, a lifetime, and let's say if one or half day passes, that session will delete itself. So, so yeah, yeah, that's some, that's nothing that you have to worry about, that's something I have to worry about, so I, I will have to, to manage properly this <laughs> killing of that, so sessions. Yes? Thank you for a great presentation. I have a question about the implementation. Um, we show all these active uh, outputs, but past uh, outputs are conventionally static. Images, uh, graphics, such as um, PDF files or whatever. Uh, how do you convert them back into this nice interactive form so users can play with them? Ah, no, I don't do that. I, I don't transform images into interactive images. I, um, for example, the heat map, imagine it like Lego. Uh, I don't have one big Lego block. I ha have just little pieces which I move around. So actually, for example, the squares in the heat map, each of them got a coordinate. Each of them got a size, a color. What I do is, with some programming knowledge, I change all of that and on the fly. That's it. But do you use R? For, uh, I don't remember you just use R for the computation, but yes. the visualization is done by something different. Yeah, the visualization is basically uh, thanks to the efforts of HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. And as a framework for those visualizations, I use D3. But you will, if you just check a little moment at Google uh, for JavaScript frameworks, you will find that they have actually have really amazing uh, frameworks for, for this kind of technology you now. Within like Two or three lines of code, you can you can get the most amazing results in your browser already. So you do not use R. So, so, I mean, yeah. R has some capabilities to do nice visualization, but you don't use them. No, right? not at all. Yeah. R is really only there for the statistics. So, for example, the clustering, the correlation values, things like that. You will actually find that in the source code of, of Smart R there is maximum like five or six hundred line of R. All the other tens of thousands lines of code are uh, something completely different. Oh God, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have so little time. You you interrupt me if it's getting too. Oh, well, well. Okay. Is there any online? I think it's better online. <laughs>